to live. No, I think we are now, yes. It says now, yeah. Hi everyone, welcome to Real Women, Real Purpose talk show live in the On Purpose Woman Global Community Facebook group. I'm Jenny Robertson, your host today, and I'm one of the hosts of the Real Women, Real Purpose talk show, and also the founder of the On Purpose Woman Global Community, and the founder and publisher of the On Purpose Woman magazine. I'm here today with Lisa Diane McCall, and we'll be talking about listening to the wisdom of your soul. Glad you're here, Lisa. Looking forward to this topic a big time. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. I've known Lisa quite a few years, but for those of you who don't, let me tell you a little, a little bit about her. With her love of observing nature and people, Lisa Diane McCall has a degree in zoology and a master's in international health from Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. She also followed her love of traveling, which included going on vision quests to in the Sahara Desert, as well as other nature-based and shamanic intensive, intensives. Life coach, Lee, Life coach Lisa brings a unique combination of tools that help clients remove blocks so that they can thrive authentically. I have to say, I didn't know you had a major in zoology. And animal behavior. What were you yeah. thinking you were going to do with that? Um, I, I wanted to be the um, quintessential naturalist. I wanted to be in the woods and observing. I, I did that a lot when I was a child. So um, I loved having um, the time in my backyard. We were feeding the birds and the squirrels. I did a whole... I think a whole uh, biology project of recording all the birds that came into our backyard. So I had a keen interest in, in animals from a very early age. Wow. And you still continue that in many well, ways. Well, yeah, I think it was sort of a progressive, then it went into sort of an anthropological, you know, um, and I was, I was the youngest of, much the youngest of four children. So I also observed a lot because I wasn't as, you know, the ability to interact um, was, you know, not, not to that level. I was not adult where the others were um, verbal. So I think that observational um, prop, uh, quality of myself came pretty early on. So yeah, yeah. I kind of went from animals to the idea of people, societies, how we interact as a whole, um, including that uh, natural and, um, you know, the organism, organisms in nature that are not human, but a human um, and then uh, doing things that are internationally based or, you know, looking at international health. And so looking at qualitative um, research, um, which mm -hmm. is what I was trained in at, in my master's program. So you've gone from nature to people and now you're doing nature and people or people in nature. So we'll talk about that yeah. later. That's really fascinating. Kind of mixed it all together. Yeah. 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 So Lisa, let's start out. I mean, there's so many things we could talk about today. But let's start out, you know, the title of this is, what is the title? Listening. I, I knew there was the wisdom of the soul, but I was like listening, listening to the wisdom of your soul. Why is that important? And what do you even mean by that? Yeah, I really, let's, let's just look at the word soul. Um, I think it's probably something that has uh, a, a number of different ways that people express themselves about it. Um, and, and so to me, it's a vital essence that's unique to each person. So you're basically saying it's your authentic, your true self. It's that deeper part, right? Um, it's that which is most wild within and the most uh, natural about us. So wild not being crazy, you know, um, crazy, crazy wild. It's that creative spark juices, the things that, you know, make us who we are and what um, propel us into our curiosity about ourselves and about life. It's deeper than our thoughts. So um, we, we, we don't tend to listen a lot in our, in our lives. And it's a, it, we're in a society that is so hell bent on being in the head and rewarding you know, how you, you know, it can uh, uh, obtain knowledge and there's nothing wrong with that. But we then get cut off and uh, we don't understand, we don't, we don't listen, um, there's a, there's a saying that we uh that i learned in that vision quest um, process of listening with the ears of your heart to all the voices of yourself speaking so listening from the ears of your heart and then digging it letting yourself to sink deeper into that essence um, i also kind of say that you're finding the rhythm of your soul which is really based that's why my my book called the rhythm of the soul a journey of loss of uh, loss and discovery it's it's a um a magical realism novel of that, but it's based on that 
deeper soul based nature work that I've done in vision quests and that um, I've done two vision quests in the Sahara Desert. So if we find that rhythm of ourselves and find that rhythm of our, of our souls um, and listen more deeply, we, we bring more richness and balance to our lives. And that's what I, I do with my, my clients is to help them drop from what that chatter, from all of those um, sort of sabotaging voices that um, are, are uh, keeping you from being really, you know, a little more in tune and in balance with mm -hmm. making choices in life. This, I, I love that. And I'm not unfamiliar with, you know, some of those processes. Is it, is it the part of us, our authentic self that's in there listening to our soul? Is that the part that we tend to try to comes up and we go, oh no, not now, or oh no, or other people may try to kind of push it down. I, I mean, would, how we can go through our whole life probably never tapping into it, correct? Exactly, and it's, and it's both. Um, I really um, uh, you know, see more and more just how we've gone through childhood. Most of us have gone through our formative years um, paying attention to, and we, we need to pay attention. We need to get some domestication to ourselves so that we can actually operate and function in, in, in our society um, on some you know, normal level. Um, but we start doing things, responding to messages that come from uh, our parents, from school, from church, from society, from you know, any number of um, places that want us to conform in a certain way. And from conforming beyond, like if there's something that's out of balance of, you know, uh, messages that are being um, said, there's a lot of dysfunction in, in all of our lives as we are growing up. Even, even um, if it's not, if there's all ranges of dysfunction, right? Mm -hmm. So there's woundedness that we are, we are dealing with. And from those messages, we start taking on certain ways of responding to the, uh, to those, to the adults around us and, um, then we start not feeling as, you know, in tune with ourselves because mm -hmm. we have to respond. So would you mind if I used something that I've heard you talk about in your uh, life that, you know, you've said many times that really kind of illustrates this idea. And that's when you've said that in your childhood, you felt like you were being told that you were too big to it. Um, we all want to be loved by our parents. We all want to do good for our, you know, you know, being uh, in, in our, our, our families. So there's adjustments that are made. And I know you have talked about being the good girl, right? You prim or you're proper, or you're not, you know, uh, getting out of bounds and bring, reining yourself in. Mm -hmm. So in that reining in, it helped you to get through those formative years. But when you, when we step out of those formative years into our adulthood, those, those parts of us are still carried with us and we're not quite as aware of them. So that's that shadow part, that's, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're doing what you're used to doing because you've practiced it so much throughout your childhood. And we and, don't question it usually because we don't even know we're doing it. Exactly. Right? Okay. And if you're lucky, I mean, and you're a person who has gone into self exploration and, and doing things that, you know, kind of question and, and wanting to unlearn what those things have been. So in that unlearning, in that um, uh, observation and, and wanting to get to understand self better, it, it brings a, a level of awareness that once you become more aware of these, um, these per personalities that we hold on to, um, you can start working with them so that mm -hmm. they work with you. Um, this idea of, uh, that's what we have in the idea of the voice dialogue, which is a technique that I use with my clients where um, if we if we take a, if we take the steps to become more aware of what we've had in the shadows. So, for instance, your primary voice was to be a good girl, mm -hmm. and it was hiding that disowned voice that wanted to be wild, which is part of that soul, right? You wanted to burst out. You wanted to express yourself, um, and that's what you've been you know, cultivating now, you've been cultivating, how do I express myself? How do I tap into my uh, bigger than britches self so that I can bring it forth more? Now, if you got too far into bigger than britches, 
we might be yeah so so it's it's in finding the balance so so bringing good girl you still need good girl right so that's the other thing you don't want to eliminate any of those 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 voices because they've always done something good for you it's just if they go way out of uh, uh out of balance i always say it's like uh let's say good girl grabbed onto that steering wheel put the pedal on the metal and went veering you know just flying off and you're in the back seat just being taken for a ride help yeah, I'm the good girl. I'm the good girl. I'm the good girl. Yeah. Nope, won't do that. Nope, won't do. I won't rock the boat. I won't. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is to become more aware of what you're doing and that good girl part so that good girl can kind of get dial that one down a bit so that you can bring your bigger than britches part into the front seat with the good girl. Mm -hmm. And so you're it's it's allying. Right. And you're the person who's now driving. Right. You're you have your hands as the centered person as having an aware ego yeah. um, to be able to work with those voices so that they balance each other. And you want to be a good girl at some times. And, you know, there's also kind of inappropriate if I started doing a stream of curse words right about now, wouldn't that's it? That's right. That's yeah. right. So I just love, I, I think that it's such a great illustration. There's very, you know, uh, rich um, uh, re depiction of what it is that is about voice dialoguing and how I, you know, encourage clients to become more uh, in tune with, those different parts of cells, primary parts, so that then the disowned parts can then, you know, kind of be able to come into more balance with each mm -hmm. other. And it is a great example, I think, and I love how you talk about, um, you know, this this other this other human that we didn't really kind of choose to be is in charge, and they're driving us off a cliff somewhere. We're just following. We're sitting mm -hmm. in the back going, "This is what I have to do." And just to say a little bit more about my experience is that, you know. From about the age of three, I can remember a lot between the ages of three and like four and a half. And I can remember after that as well, but we moved. So anything that happened in the other house, I know I was between three and four and a half. So it's like a nice marker there. And I was like a show off. I was, I was an entertainer. I would sing. There were, there was one person in the room. I would entertain them. They would let me, you know, and sometimes my parents, oh, Jenny, do your little thing for, you know, and then I remember around the age of seven, I think my mother stopped thinking it was cute. Mm -hmm. And that's when that started. So it was even bigger than, than if they had started telling me that, I don't think it would have had as big an effect, but all of a sudden there was this switch and I didn't know why. And I just knew that, okay, she was displeased. So I better behave. Right. So that, and that really illustrates yeah. there's in, incongruence, right? Where something mm -hmm. was something, then all of a sudden isn't, or something doesn't add up. And a mm -hmm. child's mind, you know, is very literal. A child's mind has to be, has to understand the world from like a very, um, you know, you're not a, not fully developed sort of brain. So, mm -hmm. you know, you start getting these things that don't add up, don't make sense. In, and the adults are being adults to you, which makes sense to them. So what do you do? You have to, right, all of a sudden you have to adjust and then, well, now you have to act that way because mm -hmm. that seems to be what I, I need to do from now. You know, that that's seems what, what works right now. Yeah, and, and that's exactly he right. Said it doesn't works. rock the boat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we carry it into our adulthood, like you said, and wonder why we're not getting the things that we say we want or we're not being fulfilled in our life or any of that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. Thank you for using my yeah, thank you for letting that. me do that. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you come to this work that you do? Well, um, I was going to do this kind of irreverently, and I'm going to do it by a poem that's by uh, Rumi called The Guest House. I love Rumi. Oh, I love we, that poem. We all know that poem. So I will say that I was a being, human being, that felt like she was a guest house. And every morning, or maybe not every morning, but I certainly did have a lot of new arrivals. They were joys, they were depressions, sometimes meanness, and momentary awarenesses that come that came as unexpected visitors. Yeah. And I welcome them all in, right? So this is the, the key to welcome them all in, which is not an easy process. Right. We want to reject these things. We want to deaden ourselves to these things. We want to like, you know, buy things and drink things. And it, there's all kinds of things we want to do mm -hmm. to, you know, not allow them in. Um, because sometimes what comes are a crowd of sorrows that violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. So, you know, you're being really wiped out. You are being thrown to the, the bottom. Still, I re, you know, just remembering that each, treat each guest honorably because 
he or she may be clearing you out for some new delight. So paying attention to that. I didn't know at the time I was doing that, but you know, I loved how Rumi talks about that. And he talks about the dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Mm -hmm. Be grateful for whatever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. So I think that I'm not the only person who can relate to that as what I somehow came to uh, choosing in my life. And it wasn't maybe even a conscious choosing that I, I you know, wanted to uh, keep a, a curiosity about myself, curiosity about the world. And, and like you said, I, I was, you know, observing nature and animals. And I was also including, you know, kind of, you know, building upon that and saying, you know, how does that also relate in terms of human beings and how, you know, we all relate on this and in, in, with each other as well as on a societal level. Um, and it took a lot of years of wending and winding. Mm -hmm. And I used to be, I used to be judgmental on myself about wending and winding. I've, I've gone into academic settings where you knew what you were going to do and you got there, you know, you better act like, you know what it is too. And it better not deviate. <laughs> right. And that's all that head based stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, it was a, a certain point in my life where I realized that, you know, okay, I'll honor these people who take that straight and narrow and they know what they're doing. I, that's great. You know, I, we all have our different paths, but I stopped comparing myself because I have a good comparison voice. I stopped comparing, comparing myself and saying, mm, if I'm going like this in my life and I'm, I'm learning along the way I'm gathering. I used to say, I used to have a, ba a big bag, you know, and I kept shoving more things in the black bag, trying to figure out, you know, what do I do with this now? What do I do with this now? And I think having that, you get to a certain age and you realize how big that bag is. And I said, ah, you know, people ask me things. People, you know, ask advice or that I seem to have a, a, something I could offer people. So I think, you know, just a lot of that, you know, um, self-exploration, curiosity about the world, doing so much traveling. Um, and I would say that I've also, you know, done the, the vision questing and um, doing uh, shaman, just training, understanding, learning about these different, and I'm not a shaman by any, sense of the word, uh, but learning, what does that mean? How does one, you know, what does the shamanic process mean? So learning all these things, you know, learning meditation, you know, doing, exploring different things, and they've all kind of come together. Um, so I, I really, and I have also, you know, over the 17 years, I've worked um, just re until recently at uh, Johns Hopkins University uh, School of Public Health with a research study that director of a research study that's looking at HIV and hepatitis C and uh, people who have a history of injection drug use, I have so been deeply affected and uh, educated in in amazing and and very sad ways mm -hmm. um, with with the stories and and relating and interacting and really holding a space of listening um, and care and concern um, in in that realm um, that is a very hard place to you know for people to live in. Yeah. And knowing we're all human and we're all challenged and, you know, it, it's regardless of who we are, we're humans and we're, we're, it's, we're challenged by, you know, what comes to us in life. Mm -hmm. So. And so to go back to what you said about you were, you didn't say zigging and zagging. What did you say? Wending and winding. Wending and winding. Yes. Same kind of thing, isn't it? You were going around and around and it sounded like the key to actually having that work in your favor was to be gentle with yourself and to be accepting of where you were at any given moment. And that took years to understand. Yeah. <laughs> As you well know. It takes I know a I've had things. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I've had times in my life, I've been probably on this journey of self-discovery and all for about at least 35 years. Mm -hmm. And there have been things, even, you know, it could, could have been yesterday that come up and I go, wow. I thought I'd healed that. Oh, that's a big one. It is. And, and it's just, it's just showing up in a different form. It's showing up from a different trigger. It's just, you know, but it's all that. And I could either, and there were times I know in the earlier times when I would just get really down on myself and say, haven't you gotten this yet? Right. And that's, that's I thought the, there was something to get. Yeah. <laughs> this that's is anything to get, right? Exactly. I always tell people, um, watch out when you say I've arrived because oh, yeah. what's coming. Oh, the next moment. <laughs> There's you know, a might just moment. kick your butt in the next exactly. Month. You can't, yeah. you know, and those who force that arrival uh, are are they? I don't know how they stay in control. It's mm -hmm. it's a hard thing. I have a hard time 
saying I'm in total control. I know that I'm ready to feed you. And for that relating, that human relating, mm-hmm. if I'm vulnerable, then people will sense that and pick up that and we will be able to talk from that place of being a vulnerable human being. So that's where I was with you know people from the inner city. Um, Hi, I know you, you know me. It doesn't matter what we look like, right? Yeah. We, can, we can still relate on the pain and suffering that is part of the human uh, you know, range of experiences. Mm-hmm. Well, let me just say, I think they were most fortunate to have you in that position and to the, the, the type of person I know that you are. And also, did it help you to almost like an on-the-job training for something that hadn't happened yet? So you know, an increase in, in the ability to feel empathy and compassion and Absolutely. the listening, the deep listening that is so important in your line of work. So how did that show up as, um, you know, in, in the coaching that you do? Yeah, um, you know, the, the, the more you sit and allow that safe, I, I always said, I, I, I want to create a safe space. So I'm holding a safe space. And when you hold a safe space and you don't try to say too much, it, it, it gives, and, and the other thing I always, what the key thing I think I really understood from working in that setting is how uh, the importance of human, humanness being seen, felt, and heard. And that's what so many people miss in their formative years. There is, there's so little being seen, felt, and heard um, and, and that is something that I, um, always, you know, I, 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 I always wanted to uh, have a person feel that, right. To, to offer that to a person as deeply as I could. So, yeah, it, it it's really kind of formed me and in, in, informed and formed me over the mm-hmm. years by doing that. And isn't that what we all want on a very deep level? Absolutely. Felt and heard? Everyone. It's a very yeah. human thing. So this is the idea of that dark heart. You know, when I say explore the dark heart, um, we are we are all in a place where there might be darkness inside of us, the shadows inside of us. Um, but if you, and it's and it really is key to have support, to have community, to have you know individuals you know who are who can support you. And I'm sure you must have had people supporting you mm-hmm. through what you were you know, growing and developing, you know, throughout your Absolutely. life. Absolutely. You can't Absolutely. do it without that support. So it's really, it's, it's part of what I do. So um, dark heart is really kind of my creative representation of the shadow. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's there's parts of yourself that you don't recognize, you're not aware of. But if you uh, live your life by saying the dark heart says, live your life, even the shadows. And this is my little representation mm-hmm. of the dark heart. Uh, live, your, um, live your life, even the shadows. Um, or even death, right? I mean, we're in a very, um, a very potent time right now. Yeah. Um, it's calling for us to have a, a more, you know, it, it's a more recognized relationship with, with death than we've ever had. Uh, but that's also a place where creativity and richness dwells. Mm-hmm. You know, the more you, the more you tap into that, the more um, you can become uh, expressive in who you are. So um, that's something that I, 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 I try to encourage my clients to do. Thank you. I do love that dark part because I think so many of us came, grew up and then in our, until we actually start doing the work when something that we don't like about ourselves that you would deem maybe shadow or something that we've done that we're ashamed of or any of that comes up, we want to just shove it back down. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean it's gone by any means. Yeah, no. And so it, we need it, to embrace it. And, and, and actually it's helped to form us in some ways too, hasn't it? Absolutely. It's been a very uh, instrumental in helping us to survive and get through to the point where we are at mm-hmm. this moment. Um, and, and the more you, you do ignore and push down, the, the louder <laughs> that <laughs> voice gets. The more, you know, you said you, even if you're doing this work, you get those recurring things that come, right? The recurring patterns, but God help you if you're not paying attention to those things, the recurring patterns get a little louder, a little darker and a little more onerous. Um, So paying attention and, and again, it has to be done with 
what I do, I mean, as we've talked about, I do intuitive, deep listening. And that's where we have um, the idea of mirroring. So mirroring is um, sensitive listening and, and clear reflection of one's stories. So by doing that, then I provide a deeper and even an archetypal meaning that raises awareness and even revelations and, and realizations about one's life. So um, that's part of it. The voice dialogue, as I said, there's the process of, you know, becoming, working with the awareness of those different um, like pr primary and disowned voices that can, mm -hmm. you know, bring them more into balance. I, I will say I am all about play, art, creative explorations. Um, that's really important because I think we don't get into our playfulness, like, you know, that, that, that child curiosity, because that's really uh, feeds us as well. Um, of course, nature-based soul work. So I even um, have taken clients where we go um, on the land and I help to give them uh, some, or we work with intention and then walking on the land um, at a park or, you know, place of nature where uh, it's a, interesting what you notice that reflects, again, a mirroring of what you're going through. And then being able to work with that as a way to expand your story and make it larger so that it's not just constantly in the same, you know, description. It's really good to get out of those descriptions and do storytelling. Um, so those are, those are, you know, some of the things that I do um, uh, and I'm and a mixture of, you know, of those things. So yeah. it's, it's, it, it, and intuitively. So uh, I kind of, I have a really good understanding of where a person, what might be the next thing that a person could do. I don't have a rote method of working with people mm -hmm. because I, I have to see what comes up and what the exchange is and where they're telling me they are in the process because coaching really is all about where the person is and you meeting them there to help them, you know, create more. It's just trying to, what I say is I provide intuitive and creative coaching to help clients understand what's what holds them back so they can finally live from that authentic wisdom of the soul. Yeah. And I know you have a great article in the onpurposewomenmagazine.com. So I'll say that right now, you know, onpurposewomenmagazine.com, go there and look at the July, August issue and all the back issues. Lisa had a number of articles in there. I've had others, yeah. In uh, 2019, you talked about vision or pandemic vision quest, I think. Yeah, was being a, we were being a, we're in a pandemic vision quest. Uh -huh. yeah. Which and is, you, yeah. you suggested that people go out into their backyards even and just walk around, be in nature, notice what comes up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I may have taken it to the ends of the earth. You know, I know a lot of people wouldn't go to the Sahara, sit in the middle of the Sahara Desert for three days and nights and not have anything to eat. <laughs> um, but that doesn't matter. Nature is everywhere. Our, we are, we are in, we live in nature. Um, so, you know, even if it's a park and um, I have a, I have a, uh, 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 you know, I do that with people. I guess. that's one of the things I offer is to mm -hmm. um, help people sort of, you know, set that intention and do it mindfully, do it in that way where it's, you're taking that, those steps to um, process what comes so that you can maybe, like I said, bring that story into mm -hmm. uh, a larger, your smaller story into a larger story. And you're doing that, you're in Baltimore, so you're doing that um, socially distanced kind and of Socially thing distanced, work. yes, because um, we're outside, yep. Yeah, I'm helping them do that. And I can even do it in remote. I could do it mm -hmm. remotely. I could set it up for somebody and they could go wherever they feel is a place that they could go okay. into, into nature. Mm -hmm. I could set that up. They go into nature for, you know, whatever minutes of, of that they're there and then come back out. And then I can, you know, do the zoom and process what they did from okay. the intention that they said, go in and then come back out and touch base with zoom again so that we can process what they went through. So I figure, you know, that's also something I can do remotely. Yeah. Anything I do, I can do remotely. Okay. Voice dialogue sessions. Doing most of it remotely now, right? It's got to be, yeah. yeah. So, you know, yeah. the voice dialogue sessions, I, I have been doing that with my clients. I, I do uh, do it over Zoom um, and, and, you know, individual coaching sessions. And, um, you know, so I, I do work with that. Okay. How can people get in touch with you, Lisa, if they want to and learn more about you? Yeah. So um, my my website is Lisa D. McCall. That's L I S A D M C C A L L dot com. When it comes up, you'll be at the Explore the Dark Heart uh, website. Um, there's also another. I actually have two websites. Um, one is called Creative Choices Coaching, all one word dot com. Um, it depends on whether you want to do that shadowy stuff or whether you want to do something, you know, it's like, where love, what, where are you in your journey? And so I have still have the two um, websites. Um, you can also email me at L D 
M-C-C-A-L-L-L-D-McCall at msn.com. So you can reach me there as well. Okay, well, thank you. This has been a wonderful discussion. And thank you. I knew it would be, but and I just love talking with you about this. And so I'm going to wrap up now. And I want to thank everyone for joining the Real Women, Real Purpose talk show. We've been here live in the On Purpose Woman Global Community Facebook group. And for a list of all of our July and August interviews, we've got a bunch coming up. We've got, um, gosh, probably at least maybe 18. I'm not sure, but a lot coming up in July and August. You can go to the onpurposewomanmagazine.com. Again, you can go there. You can actually look in our table of contents and it'll tell you the page to find our list of interviews. But I would, I want you to go through the whole magazine. There's so much wonderful uh, reading there. And there's also great advertisers who can help you with just about anything that you need support with, I would say right now. Also, um, Catherine Yarbor, the other host who does these interviews, will be uh, doing an interview tomorrow. And she'll be with um, Stacy Murphy. And they'll be talking about the seven skills of highly effective women who get the man and the money. So what do you think about that, Lisa? Who get the man and the man money. Man and the money. Yeah. I don't think the money from the man, but their own money. <laughs> making their own money and all that. So that, that'll be a really great interview. So you want to tune in to that. And also, go. we have um, a brand new YouTube channel called the On Purpose Woman Community, Global Community. So in about 24 to 48 hours, this video will be up on YouTube. And so go over there if you missed it here. This will make it a whole lot easier for people in the group to find the interviews and also to share it with everyone that you know and to go over there and like and subscribe to us. Like I said, we just started this Monday. So subscribe to us and let's help just get the word out and, and um, elevate, elevate the voices of women who are doing really good work in the world out there to a whole lot more people. And we're going to have four new interviews next week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So stay tuned for that. So we don't, and again, subscribe to the um, YouTube channel so you don't miss any of those interviews. And again, Lisa, I'm going to thank you for being here. This thank was you. great fun. And thank you for the work that you do sure. and for the people's lives that you touch. I and really don't forget, there's also my book, um, The Rhythm of the Soul. Oh, uh, yeah. Say something more about that real quick. On Amazon. You can find that on Amazon. And the Rhythm also, of the Soul. Yeah. So you can yeah, read you more about also, that when you go on Amazon. So. Right. And you can also look for Lisa Diane McCall. And it will okay. also come up. So. Okay. Great. Thanks, Lisa. Bye, Thank everyone. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye.